Hello everyone. So I have this spare Evinrude lower unit and I've been trying to figure out how to actually get the drive shaft itself out and uh, especially the drive shaft housing. Now, as you can tell, everything here is kind of broken apart. In fact, two of the holes here are just completely sawed off as I clearly tried really hard to get this thing off. Now, I first used a puller and the puller broke the clips on the edge of the, of the housing itself. But um, I was really determined to get this part off because it's the only piece of the motor I have not actually been able to get off myself. So um, the other day after trying the puller and trying various different methods, I decided to just give up. I uh, sawed around, I um, used an angle grinder, kind of sawed some of these pieces around. Basically what I did is I took metal chisels and I put them in around a, in a circle and I bashed this thing with a hammer. So essentially I, I bashed the chisel directly into the edges of this and I then I hammered down trying to get this thing up. And I took literally two hours to get this off. So I'm not sure if this motor overheated it or what, but it was, I mean, this thing was not easy to get off. And um, I haven't really found any videos that kind of show this up close and exactly how this device functions or how it goes in place. Now, one thing that makes it difficult to remove is that since it's kind of directly metal on metal and it goes into this hole here, there, there is no forgiveness, so there's there's no shaking or wobbling or anything like that. It has to come straight up, and um, obviously, since this is in seawater, it can be corroded, but... So I did get this thing off. Um, first off, I just want to start out by saying that if you do get it off, or you're wondering how to put it back in. Now, so if you're putting it back in, it has a couple of these grooves. So this groove that, that looks like this, it goes toward the back. So th this side is where the propeller is, and that way is the front of the boat. So the front of the boat side has this kind of longer, thinner groove, and the back has this other groove in here. And inside, so there are two seals, they're back to back. I made another video showing how the seals go in, but basically means that you will see a little metal spring. I actually took it out here so you won't see it over here, and on the inside. So the metal spring will face the outside on both on the inside and the outside. That, that's what it means back to back. Now, just a little bit more of how the drive shaft actually fits into the motor and what's going on. So first thing, if you're actually going to remove the drive shaft, remember that the only other thing you need to remove is the pinion nut. So the pinion nut, this is the pinion gear. This is what basically drives your entire engine. And the pinion nut goes on the end. Now there's one minor difficulty in doing this. Uh, I mean, basically, if you don't have something to hold the top of the drive shaft, so for example, as you can see, it has kind of a thread. So obviously you don't want to break this because this is a motor and I mean, they're not cheap, so you want to keep this intact. Uh, so if you kind of grip this with something, you could damage it. So if you have no proper tool to kind of clip onto the end of that, what I found is the easiest method to do it is, obviously you take the gear case out of the motor, you put a, essentially some pliers into the gear case, you grip this nut, what you do is you either put the motor back into the power head or basically put the lower unit back into the motor and you have someone else simply turn the flywheel by hand, just kind of like grab it and turn it once hard. And as long as the person down at the bottom is holding a wrench onto this bolt, onto this nut, it'll come out very easily. And this way you essentially have a free tool to put this on and take it off. So that's why I did it and it was a piece of cake. Um, this, it's not put on with any force, it just kind of slides on. So it's a, it's actually fits, it fits very, very snugly. Primary reason of why I, I really wanted to get this thing out is because when you do some maintenance on the gears or things like that, you take out the gearbox, there's always one part that's never touched and it's this, because it's, it's, it tends to be pretty difficult to do, but as long as you can get this out, replace the seals or replace the housing itself, you can literally completely refurbish an old lower unit. You can make it brand new and make it work perfectly for another 10, 15, 20 years. And um, this is the one challenge that I had. Um, I have two more of these engines and I also had a difficulty removing this, but this is the only one that I had that I could just kind of cut apart and do whatever to. And uh, the other ones, I, I had some difficulty removing it, but I didn't want to damage them. So I, I decided to practice on this and it took me a long time to get this thing out. And as clearly as you can see, I literally bashed this whole thing apart trying to remove this. Um, so now I'm gonna, the first video part of this video, I really just wanted to show what this is, what the bearing housing is, what it looks like, what the drive shaft housing or drive shaft itself looks like. But um, in the next video, 
I'm going to go into all the details, kind of what goes on here, kind of little nooks and crannies, and basically just investigate this sawed apart lowering unit here, as you can see. So let's take a look at that. 